my dear friends, I am here entirely in two capacities. One is as a as an ardent admirer of Feroz and his colleagues, who have um, devoted themselves so um, passionately to persons about whom others would not care. And uh, in Feroz's case, uh, I have a special empathy because he is an example to all of us of how to transmute our personal suffering into service of others. And secondly, I am here as the parent of a spastic child. He is now 39 years of age. He can't uh, sit on his own or stand or walk or um, he speaks syllable by syllable um, and he uh, has only partial vision only from one eye uh, but he is our life and so it is in these two capacities that uh, I am very grateful to Firoz that he has brought me here for what has turned out to be an absolutely splendid initiative. I remember the first conversation uh, about uh, holding uh, a gathering of this kind when our sites were very modest. But the idea was that we should really do a big thing so that awareness, what we were just told about the three A's, awareness and action, all these things spread. And now you can measure the, uh, the scale and visibility that this, uh, this occasion has gone when we have one of India's greatest artists, Mr. Nasiruddin Shah, come here for this. <laughs> that in the last 30 years, there really has been a great change in India towards the disabled. They used to be sort of, uh, uh, they used to be hidden in closets. And uh, parents would, uh, uh, in a sense, feel guilty or ashamed. And I remember when the first school for spastic children was set up in Bombay, and Nargis had helped a great deal, this is Nargis Dath, and then uh, Mitu's sister, Mita had set up the first school in Delhi and it was just in two rented rooms when we first started with our child there. And now, as you have just seen, a thousand persons are helped in one institution here, ten thousand have been helped in another institution. So there has been a great change. At that time there was not even a single institution for, let us say, cerebral palsy children. But the task is oceanic because of the, the, we are a large country but then we have large number of people who are disabled and many persons whose disabilities are not even recognized uh, because of malnutrition and we are, uh, they are not able to develop to their full potential. So everybody must help and I would always say, and you know this phrase which has been used as the legend for the inclusion summit that everyone is good at something, it applies to us also. There is in each of us a capacity to help others. And we must use that. We can help directly and this, unfortunately this is done most often by persons who have themselves suffered a blow a nephew, a niece, a son or a daughter who has had uh, difficulties and then we are, are awakened to a new world. But we can also uh, help by employing them and it's such a good thing that Enable India is doing in, in actually um, seeing the capacity of a person and then devising office-based solutions. And it is wonderful that such premier institutions like ANZ are now pioneering the employment of persons who by, by a small invention, by a small um, development in software are now able to be 
there are to do fully functional jobs sap has taken an enormous need uh, lead in employing persons with autism by recognizing that they have a special ability for scanning for memory so that a 20000 word a uh, 20000 line software they will be able to spot the error at once so such things uh, are things that we can all do to help and the main point i feel is that we must uh, it one thing is we must give money etc i'm not underrating that everything requires money but the most important thing is we each of us has some skill and we should that should be of a donation we should deploy our skill to help others and if somebody is a chartered accountant you can help an organization working for the disabled by looking after the accounts you are a software person in every way i tell you in our case our child cannot uh, uh, he doesn't see well so he cannot read but his hearing is very good now when i go abroad you have all these audio books and the great artists have recorded for children they have recorded for of course their the plays etc are available now, but our son does not understand english that fluently and in india the recordings for entertaining things for good things are just not available so in our case all his niece all his cousins his grandmother everybody makes tapes for him and he has a library of tapes and he knows them by heart so a simple skill each of us can record we cannot record as great artists but we can record enough to communicate the joy of a morning to a child so please that is one uh, important thing and you know the simplest change the simplest change in a product can change a person's life main aapko batlata hu hamare bachcha bachcha jo hai wo usko agar aap chamach pakdaye and kahe ki bhai aap adit chawal khao he will take his hand like this he can't bring it so the spoon goes here he can't take it but if a designer just bends the spoon his hand goes there but the spoon is in his mouth but if you ask him to now pick up the chawal he it will slide off the plate but if you have a thali which has a wall this it will the spoon will go it will rest on the wall and he can pick it up but he can't control the force of his hand so the thali will go off the table but if you make a cavity in the in the table and the thali is put in that the thali will not slide off a simple thing children and there was a wonderful artist who came and children some of the children can paint both of these paintings have been done by uh, as feroz was telling me by a, uh, a young lady who is who is autism it is beautiful paintings we would not imagine the colors that she has thought of now but some children can't hold a brush they can't hold a pencil but they devised a small uh, uh, what do you call uh, a material this is plasticine hota hai material by which it solidifies after you have gripped it you know you grip it then you keep it it will become solid so in that thing you put a pencil when it is malleable it then just stays there and they are pencils of different colors and they can be held like this i can't hold a pencil this way with if my hand hand can't go i can't hold the pencil will fall but stuck in that i can move it it's a simple device some children can't do that magar jaise wo textile ke wo chhape hote hain 
जिससे टेक्सटाइल की डिजाइन बनता है सो यू दैट वॉज टेकन अ स्टैम्प पैड द डिजाइन इज पुट ही पुट्स इट ऑन ए पीस ऑफ पेपर एंड यू हैव अ ब्यूटिफुली गुड डिजाइन रैपिंग पेपर बट इट इज अफॉर्म कलर सो समबडी सेड ओके वी जस्ट पुट थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इंक इन द स्टैम्प पैड सो जो एक मोहर है उस पर तीन रंग आ जाते हैं सो यू हैव डिफरेंट कलर्स बट नाउ ही कांट पिक अप द पेपर एंड पुट द नेक्स्ट पेपर सो अ सिंपल थिंग वॉज डन दैट यू हैव ए रोलर विच ही कैन मूव विद हिज आर्म and that brings the next paper and this goes this way and then the next paper comes just see it's it is what it, uh, this every single step in that my wife has now parkinson's for 27 years she can't tie her button she can't tie but you replace the buttons with velcro you change th- things you given confidence you given uh, that she doesn't feel dependent the point i want to illustrate is that every every one of us has this minimal skill there are very good designers who will design these wonderful wheelchairs which are motorized but each of us can think of a simple solution which will actually help change a life the quality of life for a person even if we don't do that every one of us sitting in this hall has some contact somewhere in a corporation in a government a department and you know that it in india even to do good work is so difficult so if you can ease the way of the persons who are helping the disabled through your skill one or just through your contact you would have made such a big difference if we cannot be servants we can be the servants of a servant we can help those who are helping the disabled so we should aspire for that so i would hope really that when this summit ends each one of us will do one thing which he would not have done but for the summit just one thing please resolve your minds that you will do something which you would not have done otherwise that would be then you would have really perpetuated the summit for the whole year till the next summit comes around and i can testify and that's the second point that i want to make that actually speaking this is helping others is therapeutic there is a precious sentence of the dalai lama he says if you want to be truly selfish help someone because in in helping someone you will see the klesha of your own minds come out are does he deserve are why is he not doing it for himself no 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 he he deserves this fate all that because all those things come up so as rationalizations for your not putting in the effort for not inconveniencing yourself now the dalai lama is a big man but i've had the timidity to add a footnote to what he has said he says to if you want to be truly selfish help someone i have added a footnote saying if you want to be truly selfish help someone who cannot do anything for you in return if you if you do something for one of these big men these so called big men the ministers and so on you know actually wo big shik nahi hai wo badi kursiyon par baithe hain chote aadmi hain a friend of mine used to say somebody said no no but they are such rich men he said no 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 they are poor men with money <laughs> so now the the point here was that if you do something for a big man you see 
I did such a big thing. You know, I helped this minister and get out of that case. Three years has gone by and he has not done this small thing for me. You are always waiting for him to do this small thing. So choose a person who cannot do anything for you in return and then the therapeutic effect of the service you would have rendered would be truly there. And, and so I would want to give, if you permit, five, six lessons that I have learned in serving Adit, our son, and now my wife because of uh, her Parkinson's diseases. A disease. I think the first point, uh, I, this book deals with it, but the first point that we have to remember, especially because of a completely perverse doctrine that has been drilled into us since our birth, that it is not the fault of the disabled that they have been dealt that blow. This whole notion of the theory of karma, that any isne kuch kiya hoga, the result of the theory of karma is that it blames the victim. And how do you know that it has done something? If it has done something, then the He has just been born and he has a brain injury. So what did this mean? What did this mean? He said, what did this mean? How did this mean? This is the one unknown Swiss account. That it has done something in the तुम्हें कैसे पता है कि इसने कुछ किया होगा इस पुराने जन्म में कैसे नहीं जी तो अदरवाइज ऐसी चीज होती ना सो इट्स अ सेकुलर आर्ग्युमेंट दिस इज हिज कंडीशन इज दिस बिकॉज़ ही मस्ट हैव डन समथिंग हाउ डू यू नो ही डिड समथिंग सी बिकॉज़ हिज कंडीशन इज दिस दिस इज नॉट द करेक्ट इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ द ऑफ द डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ कर्मा बट दिस इज द दिस इज द इंटरप्रिटेशन दैट वी इन इंडिया हैव इंटरनलाइज्ड and therefore, the blame is put on the person. And one of the things that I was surprised to learn after this book was published, several times I have been accosted at uh, railway stations or at airports by women, ladies, coming up to me, we are so grateful. Why? Because you have written on our behalf. That we, we were being blamed for the disabilities of our child. So, that is the first point to remember. And there are, the reason why each of us in the end suffers a blow are because there are two demons. Uh, only two demons. Why do rakshas hai? Time and chance. And the Old Testament tells us, Time and chance happeneth to them all. Often, so that's the second thing to remember, that we have not been singled out. It is because we don't know enough about others, that we don't know that they have, in their circumstances also, been dealt blows. Jaysay kaha gya hai, ke Ram gayo, Ravan gayo, ja ke bahu parivar, unke kitne bade parivar the, वो कितने बड़े थे मगर वो भी गए तो दैट कॉन्फिडेंस वी मस्ट हैव दैट इट इज ओनली टाइम एंड चांस एंड दैट सेकंडली दैट द दैट ऑलमोस्ट एवरी डिफिकल्टी कैन बी पुट टू वर्क दिस इज व्हाट दिस ग्रेट स्पिरिट्स वी हैव नाउ द मास्टर ऑफ सेरेमनीज फॉर टुडे a distinguished Toastmaster, every difficulty can be put to work, and especially by persons who are near the persons who have been dealt a blow, those who are their caregivers. The way to do that is actually to ensure, to see that serving such a person is the mean, is the best prayer and meditation. Because that person enforces something that Mr. Nasir Shah would be very familiar with this word. Our Punjab mein to bhoti hota hai. It enforces bandagi, bondage, subordination. You have to subordinate everything 
that you aspire to want to do, you have to subordinate it to the needs of that child. And that is a discipline of the mind which is the first step towards inner growth. And the second way to do it is, there's a great um, person who is not that well known in India, but he founded a old school of uh, psychotherapy called Logotherapy, Viktor Frankl. He was, like others, a person um, incarcerated in, the, um, uh, in Auschwitz. And he was one of the few survivors. Now he noticed, he was a trained psychotherapist, so he, psychoanalyst, so he was always observing others. And he found that sometimes he would get up and the person who had been lying next to him had just passed away. Nothing had happened. While other persons would walk with their heads erect, they were emaciated, they were skeletons, but they would walk with their heads erect into the gas chamber, knowing for certain that they will be dead. So he started wondering, why is this difference? And he found that, he, that those who had endowed their suffering and their condition with a meaning were the ones who survived, who or not survived, who were able to hold their erect, head erect while marching into death. Therefore his therapy was, logos means meaning, logotherapy, to endow persons who were in depression or other ways with meaning in their lives. Now the child or the person who is near us, he certainly serving him endows us with meaning. So imagine the great contribution he is making to making our life deeper. But we must know that our objective is not then fame, it is not money, it is inner growth. Then we become invulnerable. Then difficulties are as much of an, as great an asset as ease. Failure is as great a teacher in that sense as so-called success. So Frankel had a wonderful sentence that we do not, we, our freedom as human beings is limit, is restricted. We do not have freedom from conditions. But we have a freedom towards conditions. What is the attitude with which we will face a difficulty? That freedom is a freedom that others cannot take away from us, but it is a freedom that can slip away from us if we are careless. So we must hold on to that freedom towards the circumstances in which time and chance place us. But this... Uh, but, the, but there are three or four rules in this. One is that the quality of service that you render and the suffering with which you deal, that must be unique to you. If the service that you are going to render to your child or to your brother or sister is that which can be rendered by any servant, then the Therapeutic effects for you will not be much. It must be unique to you. The amount of love you will give, the amount of time you will devote, the sacrifice so-called of your career and other things that you will do, those must be unique to you. Then the therapeutic effects would be great. And there's a precious phrase of Gandhiji. He said, service and a long face don't go well together. You must bear this cheerfully. You see, in India, commitment means that placard low or street me jaakar hallam pachau. But actually, commitment is the, to cheerfully accept the consequences of the position that you have taken. So we must serve with smile on our face and with happiness so that we communicate it and you see the happiness and courage of the persons with disability and there must be it must be unrelenting 
There's another great phrase of Viktor Frankl that many people died because of what he calls a delusion of reprieve. कि उनको कहा गया कि नहीं और अमेरिकन्स आ रहे हैं अरे नहीं रशियन फोर्सेस आ रहे हैं we will be liberated ऊपर से नहीं आए वो उसी में बेचारे मर गए so this delusion of reprieve is not there this is a life long thing that you have to do and to do it again and again in the dhampad there is a wonderful sentence that as the smil as the silver smith removes impurities from silver so the wise man from himself one by one little by little again and again and forever for our entire life so do not get caught in by the delusion, uh, delusion of reprieve and the final two rules one is eternal vigilance because very often people become so proud of being humble very often we become because we suffer from cancer so the other person is suffering only from parkinsons we say are you not parkinson mujhe to cancer hai <laughs> so you have to be vigilant about the mind that should not trick you into that and you must persevere in your service till when that's the answer given by mother teresa love till it hurts but the point about that is that if you persevere that long then it will not hurt so that is the attitude with which you must do be selfish help someone help someone who cannot do anything for you in return help someone who can do nothing for you in return till it no longer hurts then you will see how much and uh, how much we gain by serving those and you will resolve before the end of the summit to do one thing which you would not have done but for this summit then the vision of feroz and of the devotion of his colleagues will really have borne fruit thank you so very much thank you